Jade. Correct. <laughs> what are you here for? You. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the raunchiest gags on Victorious that snuck their way past the censors. You know she has to say yes to everything? Uh, I'm not sure I need to hear this. Number 20, Foot Fetish. You know it's a Dan Schneider sitcom when an uncomfortable foot fetishism is involved. Yeah, I know! Doesn't my foot feel sweet? <laughs> the entire focus of the subplot is Trina showing off her smooth feet, thanks to an illegal treatment. She gets some of the rest of the gang to try the same treatment, and everyone around them is way too eager to ogle and feel their smoothened feet. Oh, that's what I said. I mean, really? Let's be serious here. That's a nice foot. Right? I know. In the end, the treatment lands them all in the hospital, and even the doctors can't resist feeling them up. We know Trina loves the attention, but we're not sure this is the kind of attention she should be looking for. It feels creepier knowing what we know now. You want to try the puka fish? You got rice and soy sauce? No. Then no! Number 19, Robbie catches Rex in the act. Robbie is finally seeing a counselor about his relationship with Rex. About time, if you ask us. What'd you say? Nothing! <laughs> say it louder. Nothing! At one point, he has Rex put in a drawer so he can talk to the counselor alone. But when he goes to get Rex, Rex scolds him for interrupting something. Hey, don't you knock. Sorry. <laughs> Makes you wonder what Rex was doing in there. Was he trying to sleep or did he need a little private time and Robbie caught him in the act? None of your business. What's that supposed to mean? None of your business. business. Oh, I know, Robbie. Oh, I gotta get some gum. On second thought, let's not think about it too long. The thought of Rex taking some personal time makes our skin crawl. Still, maybe Robbie should have knocked. It's common courtesy, after all. Number 18, are you in college yet? An ambulance is taking Beck's dad to the hospital. Don't ask, it was one of Jade and Tori's plans gone horribly wrong. The EMT assures Beck that his dad will be fine, and then comes on to him. Are you in college yet? Bye. We can't say we're surprised. Beck has an unnatural gift for charming the ladies without even trying. Still, he's a high school student, and this EMT's probably in her 20s. Isn't that a little young to be a paramedic? Something about all this feels illegal. Maybe it's for the best that Jay chased her away, whether it's out of jealousy or looking out for Beck. You love me again. Who said I stopped? Number 17, Rex gets too excited. While the gang preps for an acting challenge, Rex has a very specific character idea for Tori. Hey, Tori. Maybe you should play a woman who loves to make out with two-foot tall guys who happen to be me. To shut him up, Tori gives him a big smooch. And this leaves Rex a shuddering mess who can't seem to think of anything, much less a good quip. Rex? Take me home. It's hard to tell what Rex's reaction means. Either he was incredibly uncomfortable with the affection, or, more likely, he enjoyed Tori's kiss a little too much. Either way, Tori must be a great kisser since Rex isn't seen for the rest of the episode. While it's a questionable method, we can't deny that it's effective in shutting up the smart mouth puppet. I am a police officer, and I am victorious! Number 16, coconuts. It never hurts to try and get on the teacher's good side. An apple is the traditional route, but Psychowitz isn't really a traditional guy, and Tori duly shows up to class with his favorite treat in tow. Two large coconuts. Those are good ones. So wait, was Beck actually talking about the coconuts? Or was he referring to something else? If the latter, then wow. Really, Beck? While your girlfriend Jade's right there, no less? Transparent. I've got no secrets and neither does my locker. Some fans might miss this visual gag, but the show couldn't get it past us. Also, knowing that coconuts cause psychoids to hallucinate, does this mean Tori's a drug dealer now? You know, their milk gives me visions. I've heard. Number 15, never heard that from a girl before. I was just standing here and I said, hey. I'm sorry, it's just everyone, and I mean everyone, has been bugging me today. Lately, Tori's been annoyed by her friends wanting her to pick them to join her on a new game show. The next time she runs into Beck, Tori can't contain her frustration, leading to an exchange that leaves us with some questions. Oh my God, no, no, no! Wow, never heard that from a girl before. We're not sure which direction this joke goes. Is it that no one says no to Beck's charms or something a little more risque? Given that Beck is pretty much irresistible, it's pretty hard to believe he's been rejected in either scenario. Though with the latter, makes you wonder how many nights of fun Beck's had. I'll pass. You can't pass. 
Pass. Not an option. I don't want this question. You're only making it worse. Number 14, snoodling. Are those Pajeli Huchos? Uh-huh. I've seen them on TV. I have 142 more at home. Oh, yeah? Then give us those. What? You want our Pajeli Huchos? That's what I said. In the series finale, Victoria Yes, Kat and Robbie's clothes get stolen and they wind up hiding in their underwear. That alone guarantees this moment to spawn on the list. But to add to it, Robbie's not so innocent suggestion. What are we gonna do? Well, we, we could stay back here and snoodle. Snoodle is a fictional terminology used on the show, but no one knows for certain. It could mean to cuddle, spoon, or something a lot naughtier. <laughs> Gross. Either way, Kat rejects the idea outright. The fact that Robbie would make such a suggestion while they're already underdressed makes this entry a two-for-one deal. Number 13, The Flattest. This is going to be the most fun night ever! We can go play with Security your system. On. The gang is trapped behind a laser grid, and they'll need someone to sneak under the beams and shut them off. And Kat takes her typically quirky point of view to get right to the heart of the matter. You'd have to be pretty skinny to slide under that laser beam and not hit it. So which one of us is the flattest? With the way Kat phrased it, it's obvious it was a breast size joke, something the show never shied away from. Trina and Jade's reaction sold the joke even more since they knew there was no way they could get their assets past the lasers. They could barely fit them in a hamburger costume. Fortunately for them, Robbie gets selected since, let's face it, he's as flat as they come. Stay low, Rob. Suck in. Think flat thoughts. Number 12, the shake weight. Unless Victorious's younger fans had an advanced knowledge of obscure exercise equipment and Ellen DeGeneres, this joke likely flew right over their heads. Practice with weights! Practice with weights! I'm so red right now! In the episode Helen Back Again, Tori and her mother are seen using shake weights, a piece of exercise equipment that vibrates back and forth while being held with both hands. So do you feel like you did well? I think. I mean, Andre wrote an amazing song and he said we sounded great together. It's an objectively hilarious device, and Ellen DeGeneres was more than happy to make fun of it on her show during a segment on silly infomercials. Although Tori and her mom hold them sideways, definitely not by accident, the showrunners were clearly attempting to sneak in an adult-themed joke that only the older viewers would get. And to that we say, bravo. Uh, not so good. Oh. <sighs> I don't get the point of this exercise! Number 11. I like where this is going. Far and away Hollywood Arts' creepiest student, Sinjin has run afoul of the school's female population numerous times. For instance, in Walkstar, Tori informs him that his fly's undone. But turns out he already knows. Um, your pants are unzipped. <laughs> I know. Then there was the time Tori kissed him on the cheek, and he insinuated that he was right on the verge of getting a certain feeling. Hello, Sinjin. Oh my god, this is exactly how I dreamed it would happen. Speaking of which, in Wanko's warehouse, Tori cozies up to Sinjin, hoping he'll let her cut the line. When she puts her arm around him, his anticipation is sky high. Tori then glances at his crotch and winces in disgust. We doubt many tweens got that one. I like where this is going. Yeah. No! Ew. Number 10, Plastic Surgery. In one of the first season's most memorable episodes, Kat accidentally glues a horrifying zombie mask to Tori's face while practicing for her stage makeup class. Oh, that's glue! Yeah, but why is it with your makeup supplies? What's the problem? This is grizzly glue. It's like an industrial cement. Desperate to get the monster makeup off her face, Tori convinces Trina to call a doctor to see if there's anything they can do. Right. It's on her skin. Yeah. Grizzly glue. <laughs> it won't come off! During the call, Trina asks the doctor if she needs her parents' permission to have minor cosmetic surgery. At first, it's not clear what she means, but a not-so-subtle glance down at her chest implies that Trina was talking about breast augmentation surgery. Listen, while I've got you on the phone, would I need my parents' permission to have minor cosmetic surgery? Trina! <laughs> Hang up. I gotta go. Uh, what do you say? That I have to be 18 before you can make About me! This one was clearly meant for the parents, not the kids. Number 9, From an A to a D. Season 2's A Christmas Story opens with a visibly distraught Andre complaining about the poor grade he received in his creative music class. Andre wrote a Christmas song for his creative music class. Uh. 
and it was a really great song. Oh. But his teacher gave him... Don't say it out loud! A passionate musician, Andre is taken aback by the mark, as he's always managed to get A's in music. However, Jane's quick reply takes the conversation in a very different direction. I've always gotten A's in music. How does a person go from an A to a D? Happened to me in eighth grade. It's pretty clear that she isn't talking about a sudden decline in grades that year, but about her body experiencing dramatic changes. The quip gets a laugh from Kat, although with Kat, that doesn't mean she actually got the joke. <laughs> Number eight, feeling wonky. One of the challenges when it comes to a show like Victorious is coming up with ways to broach adult topics while using the vernacular of a younger audience. What'd you think? <laughs> you like that? Mm -hmm. This was never more apparent than in the season two episode Jade Gets Crushed. In it, Andre suddenly finds himself overwhelmed with feelings for Jade, despite the fact that she's dating his best friend. I'm tripping out, Tori. I'm tripping out. He later attempts to kiss Tori, because she's dressed like Jade, and admits it's because he's feeling wonky. To some, this probably just sounded like a goofy word for lovesick, but adult viewers knew right away that it was a euphemism for horny. Keep it in your pants, Andre. I got all wonky, willy wonky. <laughs> Number seven, slapped with a sausage. Okay, this one was just gross. During the annual kickback party at Hollywood Arts, Tori is offered a sausage by Psychowitz, who's manning the barbecue. Would you like a sausage? <laughs> uh, sure, okay. Excellent. Here's a nice fat one. When Tori asks what kind of meat it's made of, Psychowitz laughs off the question and refuses to tell her. What kind of sausage is this? Oh. Just sausage, you know. Strange, but we'll let it slide. With her sausage still in hand, Tori goes to talk to Jade. When Jade comments on the fact that Kat is dancing with Tori's ex, Tori threatens her with the sausage, only to find that Jade is into the idea. We think that one's pretty self-explanatory. You wanna get slapped with a sausage? Sure. No! Number six, sexually active. In the season one episode, Robberazzi, Robbie suddenly becomes popular when he starts posting embarrassing videos of friends on a TMZ style vlog. Hey, Robbie. Robbie. Oh, hi. TheSlap.com. That thing you did on Tori was hilarious. You liked my pimple piece? Awesome. Rocked. Thanks. <laughs> oh, hey, funny stuff on the slap. One of the videos shows Beck and Jade sitting in a car discussing what sounds like a very sensitive topic. Wait, 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 wait. you got what? I got Beck and Jade in the front seat of Beck's car, and you need to see this. While we don't get to see the full conversation, we do hear Jade turning Beck down with an interesting excuse. While not overtly sexual, the fact that this conversation takes place between two teens sitting in a parked car at night certainly makes it suggestive. You probably didn't think twice about the scene when you were younger, but now it's painfully obvious what was going on. Come on, let's just go, it'll be fun. No. Why not? Because I didn't shower this morning and I had tuna fish for lunch and I... <laughs> There's a dude in the back seat! Number five, oral insinuations. In the episode Rex Dies, Beck and Andre are excited to show off the school's newest toy, the Turbo Jet. Cool, what's that? This is a turbo jet to create the tornado for the play. Meant for use in an upcoming play, we think the real reason the writers introduced it was so they could slip in dirty jokes. For instance, when Tori sees it, the first thing she wants to know is if it blows, and the boys are more than happy to answer that question for her. It blows? It blows. <laughs> blows. Blows, yeah. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. Not only does this massive excuse to have teenagers say dirty things blow, it also sucks. Yep, and it doesn't just blow. You flick that little red guy into reverse, it sucks. And when Tori sees the Turbo Jet sucking power, she quips. Now that is some serious suckage. Number four, Mrs. Vega and Gary. Let's face it, Tori's mom, Holly Vega, was never mother of the year. However, in a few episodes, we see a few red flags that involve her and her husband's police friend, Gary. Can you call his partner? Okay, I'll text Gary. Yeah, text Gary, I like that guy. I know, he's handsome, right? <laughs> Kinda. She seems to text with him a lot, and it always puts her in a good mood. And Gary himself has a pretty high opinion of Holly. She's a special lady. 
fakes? Arguably the biggest red flag is how Holly's quick to make sure no one sees what Gary is texting her. It's pretty obvious what's going on, but it raises one important question. Have things in the Vega house been so bad that Holly has to have an affair behind her family's back? What do you say? Oh, nothing. I'll just delete this. <laughs> Number three, the scissoring. Oh my God, Kat, you did not. <laughs> scissors. They're special scissors. Jade's all-time favorite movie is a horror flick called The Scissoring, which features a girl using a pair of scissors as a murder weapon. How very appropriate for Jade. The older fans of Victorious might recognize the film's name as a double entendre. Starting with the pretty girl. <laughs> oh. Once again, the show staff proved themselves sneaky enough to slip adult slang into a show marketed to kids. The joke works even more for Jade since fans tend to ship her with Tori. So maybe it's a not so subtle way of hinting that Jade plays for both teams. Don't be shy. <laughs> Number two, code words. Season three of Victorious kicked things off with an episode-long parody of the seminal 1985 teen comedy, The Breakfast Club. That's three! Three Saturdays! But she was apologizing. Okay, Vega, now you got one. Why? Boom, another one! Just like in the movie, Tori and the gang are forced to spend their Saturday in detention. While there, they parody a number of scenes from the film, including the part in which Bender teases Claire and Brian for being virgins. Our pristine little friend, Kat, has never had a taco. I'm not that pristine. Wait, what's pristine mean? <laughs> Are you a vegan? Victorious pays homage to the moment in its own way, substituting sex for tacos and virgin for vegan. Jane plays the bender role while Kat subs in for Claire. Have you ever had a crispy corn shell <laughs> filled with meat? Seeing as how The Breakfast Club came out 25 years before Victoria's premiered, we doubt many kids caught on to this sly reference. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, The Wood. This episode featured a number of sexual innuendos, with the title serving as perhaps the most obvious one. I want to be on a TV show. <laughs> what show are you guys from? It's a new one called The Wood. I want to be on The Wood? What's The Wood? I want to be on it! While said title refers to the name of a reality TV show filming at Hollywood Arts High School, it's also a slang word for something else. So it's more than a little cringy when Trina excitedly exclaims that she wants to be on The Wood. Later, we see Lane squirting lotion all over Robbie and Trina in a not-so-subtle illusion. Oh, and sneaking a peek at the wood? That's a double entendre if we've ever heard one. What adult jokes did you miss the first time? Let us know in the comments. Oh, you did it. I bet that jingled his bells. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.